depression sometimes has been called the, the hopelessness disease. Not even being able to imagine that things will ever get any better. It's, it's, it's like this eternal sadness. Normally our emotions can go up and down. For example, at this particular moment, I can imagine really difficult things and I can imagine really good things. A person who's depressed, they cannot imagine such a thing that's good. My interest in depression really goes back to my own childhood and growing up years, where I would see my father going in and out of periods of depression. He was hospitalized uh, probably a handful of times that I'm aware of as I was growing up. We didn't have a word for it at the time. Uh, as, as you can imagine, it was sort of hush-hush. You know, daddy's sick and he'll be, he'll be away for a while. My father was a person who, without question, he loved Jesus, without question. But I would find that day after day, uh, guilt was just utterly oppressive. He could never do enough. He was always a failure in his own mind. And I can remember, even when I was younger, trying to, to just to affirm him. But I just felt like my words, they just, they didn't penetrate. He, he didn't hear them. It was as if he was sealed off in some way. So I've seen the stubbornness of depression in a close hand with my, with my father's life. To, to trust another person when you're depressed, to give yourself, to, 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 to speak of that kind of pain to another person is, is without question a huge risk. And, and, and one of the risks is that you're, that you're gonna be proved right. Nobody understands what I'm experiencing. And here I just tried to share it with this person and they didn't understand a word of what I said. That absolutely is, is one of the risks with people who struggle with depression. And it's the risk, frankly, that, that everyone who has gone through deep suffering experiences because everyone who's gone through deep suffering, they have had very well-intentioned people say things that ultimately were, were hurtful kinds of things. One of the ways that, that God comes close to the depressed person and, and invites them is he says, especially by way of the Psalms, I want you to speak to me from your heart. Now, that seems like a very easy thing to do, doesn't it? I mean, you just speak. But the problem is depression, sometimes they're hard, it's hard to find words for it because it's so severe. And also, to speak to another person, it demands a certain smidgen of hope. Okay? You have to believe that there is a reason for it. There's some sort of purpose behind it. But that is one of the things that God does that, that, that gently surprises a depressed person. He says, first, Speak to me, he says. Speak to me from your heart. And if you don't have words, you know, search through the Psalms and, and I'll even give you the words to say. That's one way the Lord begins to pierce through this, this, this it feels like this armor of sadness that we can have around us. The people I know who have struggled with depression and have, have, have persevered with me, if you will, uh, and with other people in the body of Christ and with the Lord, those are always, those are my heroes. Okay? Those are people, they, they, they struggle, every day is hard, but, but they, they get up out of bed every day simply out of this weak obedience to Christ. And I find that to be so incredibly heroic. When, when I've had the privilege of being able to walk with people who've been, been depressed, they might say, well, I'll tell you the truth, I don't, I don't remember much Ed, that Ed said. <laughs> you know, you, I'm thinking, oh no, I didn't say anything useful. But, but they say something better. But I, I knew he was there and, and he was walking with me in the midst of it. Um, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, help a counselor's self-esteem, but it's better, it's better than that.